You know as well as I do when building a home theater, it's never really finished, right? Well, I believe I am finished with my speakers and subwoofers. This past week, we installed eight JTR 110 HT SL speakers for my side surrounds, rear surrounds, and my height speakers. Now in this video, I wanna share with you that process, what it looked like, some challenges that we ran into, and of course, my overall impressions of having a full 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos JTR system. Now, previous to this upgrade, I had four Klipsch RS62 version two speakers. Now, these are wide dispersion speakers, and back when I built my theater room 16 years ago, Dolby had recommended that we use wide dispersion speakers, which is basically kind of like a dipole speaker. So with these speakers, they have a tweeter and a woofer angled one direction, and then on the opposite side, they have another tweeter and a woofer angled in the opposite direction. So the purpose of this is it disperses the sound and kind of wraps around you, and that way you really can't localize where exactly the sound is coming from. You just know it's somewhere over here or somewhere back here. Now that worked really well for Dolby Digital as well as the original DTS. But over the years, we've upgraded and changed formats and now we have immersive audio. We have things like Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, as well as Oro 3D. And with these immersive formats, the idea is to have discrete sound from each channel firing directly near your listening position. Now, before I share with you the install process and some challenges that we ran into and how much I enjoy these speakers and some demos that I went through over the past week, I wanna kind of back up two years ago. Many of you guys told me that if I loved my SVS PB16s, that I absolutely had to check out JTR. Well, at that time, I didn't know who JTR was. I'd never heard of them. And so I reached out to them via their website. I reached out to them on Facebook and Instagram. Didn't hear back from them at all. Now at the time, Jeff Permanian, which is the president and owner of JTR Speakers, he was doing everything himself. He physically is the engineer. He is physically building each speaker by hand. He's building and designing the crossovers, the networks inside the speakers. He's handling customer service, shipping, trying to do all of that. And so at first I thought maybe he was blowing me off or maybe he just wasn't interested in having me review some of his products, but the reality was he was just overwhelmed. Eventually I got in touch with him on Facebook and he said, man, I'd love to send you my subwoofers to check out and see what you think. So he sent me two of the JTR Captivator RS2s. Now these are sealed subwoofers. They've got dual 18s in them, and they also have a 4,000 watt continuous amplifier in each cabinet. Now these are massive subwoofers. They both weigh about 220 pounds each, and I was simply blown away at what I was experiencing in my room. I love the SVS PB16s, but about 17 hertz, they pretty much begin to drop off pretty quick. The JTR RS2s are flat in my room down to five hertz. That's insane. We just got more output and more headroom than my little room can physically handle. And so that gives me a lot of headroom. We've got zero port noise because there is no port in a sealed cabinet. And so that was a benefit and it was just super tight, super punchy, but massive, massive impact in my listening position. So after reviewing those, I ended up selling my PB16s, upgrading to the RS2s. And I told Jeff, man, I love your subwoofers. One day I would really, really like to hear what your speakers sound like. So Jeff replied and said, you know, I can make that happen, right? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I can always put you on a plane bring you up here to Wisconsin, which is where they previously were located, and I can let you hear a couple of JTR systems, full JTR systems with my subs, my speakers, and just let you see what they sound like. So I gladly took him up on his offer, flew to Wisconsin. I had an amazing opportunity to hear three really killer JTR systems. The first one we went to was Tony Negretti. So Tony is now working with JTR in sales, but at that time, he was just one of their great customers. He had a full JTR system. And to this date, 
I have done probably over 50 home theater tours here on the channel. And still to this date, Tony's is by far one of the most incredible home theaters that I have ever experienced in my time making content here on YouTube. So that was an amazing system. Then we went over to Scott Newby. Scott Newby's got a killer system inside a really small room, but he's just got ridiculous amounts of bass. He has up to, I think recently he just hit 150 dB in his room, which is insane. Scott's an incredible guy, has an amazing sound system. And then I went over to Jeff's house and he had the towers, the, I think they're the 215 RTs, which are the biggest towers that he makes. Heard that in a two channel setup. Again, absolutely phenomenal. So from that trip, I knew that eventually down the road, that is like the direction I want to go. I want to begin to develop this room and get this to the point to where it's eventually a full JTR system. The following year, I flew up to Kansas City and had the opportunity to hear many other JTR systems. A lot of guys in the Kansas City area have some JTR speakers and JTR subwoofers and JTR home theaters. And again, just once more, it was solidifying. That's the exact sound that I'm looking for in my home theater. So over the past two years, I've been working towards upgrading my side surrounds and my height channels to JTR speakers. Now the speakers that I was looking at were the JTR 110HT-SL. Now the SL stands for slant. Now one of the main reasons I wanted to upgrade to the slants was because I've got limited space and locations where I can place my side surrounds and rear surround speakers. So when you first walk in my room, my right side surround is sitting in front of a double sliding glass window, and then in front of that is a curtain. Now a long time ago, a friend of mine made a custom mount that allows me to hang a speaker directly in front of that double sliding glass door and that curtain. But one problem is that is the main hallway. That is the main aisle. When you first enter my room and walk towards the front of my room, you're faced with that speaker kind of right in the way. And so a lot of guys, including myself, I'm 5'11", and I bump that thing every once in a while. But over the years, I've learned to kind of duck my head when I come in the room. But some other guys that are a little bit taller than me, they don't know so much. And so sometimes they'll back up and bang against that speaker. So one thing that's really great about the slants is as you can see, the top part extends out a little bit farther, but the bottom part, it gets narrower. So what that allows in my room is we've got more walkway and people aren't going to bang their heads near as much as when I had the clip speakers. Another reason why I wanted to go with slants is because again, limited space on where I could put that, I can't physically lower those too much more or people are going to face plant right into that speaker as they walk into the room. So having them up higher means that my previous sound was kind of blowing and, and going right over my head. Now granted, there is some vertical dispersion, and so the sound was reaching me, but now I've got those speakers angled at a 45 degree angle, and that is hitting me directly here in my primary listening position, and that in itself has been a huge upgrade. So many months ago, I told Jeff I was ready to upgrade to the 110 HT slants, and we began to think about process and time, and one concern I had was I'm not super handy. Um, I can mount side surrounds, but I had no idea how I was going to mount and install four ceiling speakers. Now, I know Tony has done the same thing in his. I think he's got the smaller eights that Jeff used to sell installed in his, so he knew how to do it. Well, Jeff said, hey, I'm gonna be down in Florida visiting family on vacation um, in late um, March, early April. And so I'm gonna be down in your area. Maybe we can try to figure out and coordinate an opportunity for me to come by, hear your setup, help you install them. Maybe we'll bring Tony down as well. He can stay for a couple days and help you get that set up. And so both of them were here for about Tony was here for three days and then Jeff parked his RV in my driveway and then he was able to visit with family and friends, going to the beach, spending time with the kids while Tony and I were doing a lot of the install. So the first three days we were working nonstop from like eight in the morning, we'd finish up 10.30 at night, 
trying to get this room set up and get these speakers installed. Now, initially they told me it'd be about two or three hours per speaker to install. Well, it ended up being a lot more than that because neither one of us, any, any of us three, are what I would consider like installers. I mean, Jeff's an engineer, Tony's a home theater enthusiast, and he has a lot of skills, but he this isn't what he does every day. And of course, I definitely don't have a lot of tools and such, so I even borrowed a lot of tools, like a Craig's jig uh, to make the install easier. I, I borrowed, a, I think it was a radial saw from a friend of mine and some big ladders from another friend that uh, is involved in construction and he had all kinds of tools. He let me borrow this really cool laser level that allowed us to align the speakers and get those set up. And so it really took a culmination of many people, probably about four different people, uh, to build or to get these speakers installed and set up. It's been awesome process. So in my room, we had several challenges that added to the time that it was taking to install these speakers. Number one, I've got a custom mount over here, so we had to figure out how do we design a back plate so that we don't physically have to drill through my mount, my steel mount, into the speaker. I really didn't want to do that. I like to preserve my speakers. I'm really particular. Um, I don't ever want to scratch them or damage them in any capacity if I don't have to. So we fabricated a wooden back plate made out of uh, plywood. Then we screwed that into my steel mount and then we could secure that into the rear of the speaker using the four keyhole brackets. Then we move over to this left side wall and that's an exterior wall. And so one thing that Jeff didn't realize was I've got concrete block and then there's only a small gap between the concrete block and the, um, the drywall because it's only separated by a furring strip, which is really narrow. So originally he had these big massive anchors that we were gonna put in there to secure these speakers to that wall, but they were way, way, way too deep because it would hit into the concrete block, but they weren't long enough to go inside the concrete block and expand. So that was another challenge. We had to come up with a different approach to securing this. The last thing we want to do is just put in like your regular drywall anchors. I've learned my lesson over the years not to do that. You don't want that speaker coming off the wall. So we ended up using four toggle bolts. Of course, each toggle bolt can hold like 200 pounds each. So this is way, way, way overkill. And Jeff said anytime he's installing, he loves doing the 10 to one ratio. Go 10 times more than what you need, and then you don't have to ever worry about it coming down. The rear speakers were probably the easiest because I've got an interior wall there, so there's plenty of space between that. We were able to anchor some of them into studs, and the other ones were, again, using those massive toggle bolts. Now, the most difficult part of this upgrade was installing the 110s on my ceiling. Now, I live in Florida, and Florida attics get stupidly hot. I mean, we're talking ridiculous amounts of heat in a Florida attic. And so we wanted to try to minimize the amount of time that I would be up there. And so some of the things that we were able to do since I already had an eight inch hole for my clips in ceiling speakers, we were able to remove that, take a tape measure up there and measure how wide the joists were for the front speakers. We did the same thing for the rear speakers just in case. And we actually found out that they were had different widths. So that was really good that we pre-measured that before climbing in the attic because that would have been a big mistake, climbing all the way up there, trying to get these boards to fit, only to realize they're too wide. Another way we were able to prepare for the install was to use a Craig's jig. Now this Craig's jig is just kind of like a tool that attaches to the top of the two by four and you clamp it down to it. And then you take the drill, pre-drill into it so you've already got your holes. And then we would take each screw, go ahead and get those partially screwed in. And that way when I climbed in the attic, all I had to do, the screws were there, the two by four was there, lay it down on top of uh, my drywall, and then screw that into the joists on both sides. Once again, we utilized the eight inch holes in my ceiling to go ahead and feed those two by fours up there. That way I wouldn't have to load those up and try to carry those from one end of my attic to the other. All in all, I ended up spending 1.5 hours in my attic at one sitting. 
I had the guys sending me up water bottles through those eight inch holes to keep me hydrated. I would try to take breaks, but my goodness, it's just exhausting. Every little you know, bit that you try to move, there's not a lot of oxygen up there. Of course, you've got this massive heat. You're in a cramped space over my theater room. I was always either on my knees with um, you know, a piece of wood stretching across the joist, or I was in a squatting position. So it just gets extremely tiresome. I did okay up until like the last 10 minutes. And then I kind of had a little panic attack. I'm like, I want down, I'm done with this. And so I finally got those last boards in, got out of there, took a shower and had a chance to take a breath. Now my number one concern is safety. I don't want these speakers ever to come down or have any chance of falling. And so I wanted to make sure that we had a stud for each one of the four screws that are gonna be supporting these speakers. So now that we've added our own studs up into the attic that the four screws for each speaker can drill into, now it was the time to align that. We actually made kind of a custom template so that we can make sure we've got exactly 10 inch by 10 inch by 10 inch so that when we put the screws in there, the speakers are going to align with the keyholes. So once we get those mounted and secured to the ceiling, we also placed a little L bracket on the back side of the speaker so that none of those speakers could shift and come down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw out a disclaimer. Installing speakers on your ceiling, you need to do that at your own risk and I'm taking that risk fully on my own. These speakers are actually designed to be on wall speakers as height speakers, maybe as your surrounds, or you can use them as your Atmos channels up high near your ceiling angled down. I just chose to put them on my ceiling because it's a more accurate representation of where those speakers need to be placed. So now let's get to the fun part. How do they sound? So we dial in everything. We rerun Odyssey, add my house curve, um, did some demos, changed a couple settings in the in the processor, and we cranked up some demo clips. We were doing a lot of the Dolby Atmos. We had some other clips from movies. Stuff sounded amazing, and so we had worked hard. So we're like, let's just reward ourselves. Let's watch a movie. Now, granted, Jeff, again, he's on vacation. He's got his small kids with him. So we, we weren't able to, to watch something like a John Wick 3 because they're so young, but we ended up watching Ready Player One. Honestly, guys, I know I've used that demo over and over and over, the race scene, of course, but there are so many opportunities in that movie that they have greatly utilized Atmos, your side surrounds, your rear surrounds. It's just a phenomenal movie sound-wise, but also it's just a great, wholesome movie overall. It's got a great story. So we watched that movie and I'm hearing details that I don't think I've ever really noticed, um, partially because now my speakers are properly aligned. They're angled towards my listening position. They're now direct radiating versus a wide dispersion. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. So I was super stoked with that. Then the next day, I wanted to hear some more content. Now, I didn't watch the whole movie, but I had to see how Top Gun sounded. So I put in Top Gun and Maverick, and I'm, I fast forward to, you know, of course, that last major battle, that last scene, and I won't give any spoilers. But man, we cranked that thing up, and I'm like a little kid, man. I'm grinning from ear to ear. The level of detail when, when missiles are flying overhead and when the rockets come shooting out at the aircraft and when they're doing their barrel rolls and oh my goodness, man, it was literally spectacular. I've never heard my system sound so good, sound so cohesive because I've got eight speakers creating this um, this bubble of sound around me, behind my head, up above me, and being able to hear those distinct sounds coming from each individual speaker versus just kind of blending it in with those wide dispersion speakers that I had previously, man, guys, it made all the difference. So overall, I am absolutely more in love with immersive audio than I was 
even when I first installed my in-ceiling speakers. Now I can safely say that this is one of the best upgrades that I've made to my theater in a long time. Now I've shared with you guys over and over, listen to as many home theaters and speakers as possible. Find the sound that you're looking for, begin to build that over time. Don't be scared, it's taken me 16 years to get to this point. Don't be scared to enjoy the journey. Don't be scared to build this thing over time. Even if at the beginning you gotta kinda have a mix match system, maybe your front LCR is different brand than your, your side surrounds or your Atmos speakers. To me, that doesn't matter. I'm not worried about chasing and getting to the end result. I'm enjoying that journey. We all have different budgets. We all have different amounts of disposable income. And so sometimes it takes many years for us to save over time to make these significant upgrades and ultimately get our theaters where we want them to be. Now, if you've never heard a JTR home theater system, I wanna highly encourage you to join us in July for the Midwest AV experience. Myself and my partner Ryan are putting together for the second year the incredible opportunity for you as a home theater enthusiast to experience some really cool demo theater rooms and one of those is JTR. Jeff and his team are bringing a full 7.4.6 Dolby Atmos system. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So if you can make it, we'd love to have you join us. I'll have a link to the website down in the description below, as well as products from JTR. Well guys, I hope this video has inspired you. Continue to pursue your passion in home theater, building your setup, enjoying movies as well as music with you and your friends. As always, I hope you guys have an incredible week. God bless, and we will catch you in the next video.